In the spring of 1876, Marshall Twitchell risked a brief visit to Cushada to tend to some business. On May 1st, he goes into Cushada and finds an unusual number of prominent Democrats in town. Some kind of powwow is clearly going on. And he asked one of them, it's late in the day, what's everybody doing around here so late in the day? It's almost dark. And he's informed that an issue of long standing is being decided. And only afterwards will the meaning of that reply become apparent to him. Twitchell has to be done away with. And, and maybe that will end it, because we're at war now. The following day, Twitchell left his plantation for a meeting in town. With him was his only surviving brother-in-law, George King. They took the ferry across the river to Cushada. Early that morning, a strangely clad man had ridden into Cushada. He was wearing a long oilcloth coat, green eye goggles, a hat pulled down low over his face, and possibly false whiskers. He goes to the blacksmith shop, and there he waits. As the ferry approached, the man made his way to the riverbank in full view of townspeople. Twitchell is sitting in the ferry reading a newspaper. He looks up, sees this man pull the rifle from underneath his coat, and he screams out down in the boat. Twitchell moves fast. He gets hit in the leg before he can get over the side of the boat. brother-in-law George King pulls a pistol and gets off a shot and the rifleman above shoots him in the head and he pitches back in the boat dead. Twitchell's got one arm up over the gunwale of the boat. The rifleman above is a good shot. He puts two bullets in that arm. Twitchell uses his other arm rifleman puts two bullets in that arm. And the rifleman above empties the rifle, throws it aside, pulls out a big pistol, and blazes away with that. Twitchell, he's been shot six times. He whispers to the ferryman, tell him I am dead and he turns and floats face down in the water, drifting with the current. A black servant woman approaches the rifleman. She asks him if he was shooting at an alligator, and he says, yes, a damned black alligator. The assassin's identity was never revealed. There's some speculation as to uh, it being my great-grandfather. He was the kind of man that could have done it. If it had to be done, he would have done it. Amazingly, Twitchell survived the shooting. He was taken to a house a few miles from Cushada where both his arms were amputated. I turned my face to the window, watching the sun as it disappeared behind the trees, reviewing my past life and trying to imagine what would be my future in the world. A delegation of local black ministers came to pay their respects. The concern of these ministers was not simply for Twitchell himself, but for all he represented. He represented this dream of a truly biracial society in which black people would be treated with respect and dignity. And he's almost a corpse now, and he becomes a metaphor for their own broken dreams.
the White League and Kushada had a very different reaction. Our people rejoiced at it, B.W. Marston recalled, as much as they would at the killing of any tyrant in the world. Everyone was very happy that Twitchell was gone. We're still happy today that he's gone. 